A Maxitov Kasegran, you've probably not heard of this type of scope as much. It's a type of scope that actually looks a lot like a Schmidt Kasegran, which you've, I'm sure you've heard of one of those before. Schmidt Kasegrans are very popular, and I know uh, some of the biggest telescope manufacturers out there sell a ton of these things. But the Maxitov Kasegran, it's a it's, it's almost like the exact same arrangement of optics. It's got the same number of mirrors or in the same spots. It's got the same amount of glass in it, but the glass and mirrors are shaped differently. And that's what kind of makes a Maxitov case of grand, uh, different from the rest. So they are typically a slower scope. Okay, like a, a Schmidt case of grand, is typically like F10, F8, something like that, which uh, to me is actually really slow. Uh, Maxitov Kasegran is typically like F13 or F10 or higher, at least. Now this is a scope from SV Boney. This is a 105 millimeter scope. At least that's the aperture. And yeah, it's not that heavy. <laughs> so this is F13. And this has a 1,350 millimeter focal length. And if I hold it back up here to my Newtonian, which is a 1,000 millimeter focal length, it's like one third the length and a heck of a lot smaller and a lot lighter too. Now, what would an astrophotographer want this type of scope for? It's pretty simple. There are essentially two different types of targets that immediately come to mind. Well, actually three, okay. so. Lunar astrophotography, taking pictures of the moon. This guy is perfect for that. A second thing is planetary imaging. These guys are fantastic at planetary imaging. And often, uh, a lot of people will spend big bucks on getting a Maxitov Casey grant for planetary imaging. And yes, you actually you can do solar with this. So that's, that's right there is three. We're already at the three here. And then for deep sky objects, globular clusters. Now. Great thing about all of the different targets that you would want to image with this type of scope is that if you live in the city, all of these kinds of targets are ideal for you because globular clusters, they're very small, but they are very bright. They don't require any type of filtration. So you don't have to kind of like do narrow band imaging or any kind of special processing. You can use one shot color cameras for it. Usually your imaging sessions are shorter because you're doing shorter exposures. Also, you're typically putting a lighter camera on the backside. A lot of times, you know, you're, you're using like a planetary camera for, for this kind of imaging with this. Now, I am actually going to give this a try with a couple different cameras that I have. I have, this is a one shot color camera that I'm gonna give it a try with. And then I've also got this guy. This is an IMX 178mm. This is a cool camera. I'll have to put a filter wheel in here, obviously, but the telescope does come with M42 threads in the back. So adopting it's pretty easy. This guy, he focuses, I believe, by moving the, the main mirror in and out. That's what this knob here does. As the imaging train moves throughout the night, the mirror in there can sometimes move a little bit because it's the way it's, it's supported in here can kind of shift, all right? With the Max Stuff Casey Grant, typically this is not a problem for two reasons. Number one, they're smaller. You don't usually see these scopes much bigger than five inches. And secondly, because the targets that you're typically targeting with a scope like this are brighter targets, typically you're not going to do a very long imaging session with them. You know, typically you're maybe doing 120 second exposures at the most with globular clusters. In the city, you might need to do 300 second exposures. I'm not sure, but uh, you know, you're typically not doing a very long imaging session, let's put it that way. So you're not gonna be going from like looking at the sky to here, to all the way over here and doing a meridian flip in the meantime. And then of course for planetary imaging and solar imaging and lunar imaging, of course that's that's gonna be a much, much shorter imaging session. You know, you'll be able to sit at the scope and do the work and then be done essentially. That's what you would want a Maxitov Kasegran for. Now I am probably, I think I'm gonna like 3D print a, an extension shade for this thing to kind of keep dew and stuff off the front lens element. And that's kind of, let's, let's talk a little about the optics. Usually the secondary mirror, you can see it on the front side of it, it's a little reflective piece of mirror as well. And that's because it's stuck to the back side of the glass on the front lens element. Whereas Schmidt-Casey typically it's inserted into the glass. 
Also, there's the shape of the front lens element on the Schmidt Case Grant. It's pretty flat. Whereas with the Maxilof case of Grant, there's actually a pretty aggressive curve inwards on the front lens element. And that's probably one of the reasons why SV Boney ships a blower to, to get dust off of it. Because anytime you have a lens element that kind of curves inwards, typically that's a magnet for dust. So that's kind of another reason why I think I'm going to 3D print an extension for this thing to, to kind of protect the front lens element. And I'll probably have to make a a batten off mask for it as well. I'm gonna give this little planetary hunter a try. Maybe we'll see if we can spot Pluto with this or a few other fun targets. I'm probably gonna do all my planetary image processing within the ASI Air. And that's because well, doing it on a Mac is a bit of a pain. All the software that's available for a Mac is quite old. Like, like my latest MacBook Pro, I think it has 32 cores in it and the software can only address one of those cores. So I'm working at 1 32nd of my total computer's power just because the software is so freaking old. But yeah, we will have some fun with this and stay tuned.